Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another Rome 2 Siege Battle for you today. This one was sent in by a member of the Discord and it is a super close uh, Siege Battle and it finishes with literally like no men left on the battlefield. So it's definitely worth checking out till the end. Um, it is a 3v3, we have the defenders today, we have Kush, the Arverni and Swaby against Carthage, Rome and the Seleucids. So we have some pretty strong attacking forces and we have some strong defending forces in Kush especially being one of the strongest here. This is on a map of Lefurdum. So it's kind of like, it's in the middle of Germany, but they've got like stone walls, which is kind of a bit weird, but we'll breeze over that. But anyway, we've got Libyan infantry instantly coming onto the walls and they're getting absolutely uh, harassed by, uh, ar well not archers, by javelins. Sorry, but they're all hitting, like they're throwing their javelins directly up and they're like hitting like the bottoms here, not doing any damage. So you got to make sure that when you're like in sieges, I always forget sometimes myself, but you got to remember just to uh, make sure you get everything off auto five, because otherwise they just waste their javelins up there, doing nothing. But we do have oh, we have breaches being formed here, and uh, we've looks like we're gonna have some Libyan infantry coming through some breaches here, which the round shields are ready for, and we have some more Libyan infantry here ready. F uh, these round shields I think will probably get overwhelmed by the uh, Libyans, but I could be wrong. Uh, we've got Rome over here. He's sending up some stuff. He's got some. Uh, Tortoise is ready. I mean, this is... I said in one of the past uh, Rome 2 sieges, this necessarily doesn't work. Just having four all together. In this case, it did, actually. It didn't bug out. Yeah, so Rome was lucky here, and he did open up a huge breach. But anyway, sometimes doing that's never the greatest idea. You want to spread them out so you can flank around. But he's... Rome's uh, not going to have any fighting here initially. He's going to have to fight Kush in a moment down this street. But initially, he won't have to fight the walls. He can help support Carthage as he fancies. Um, and Seleucids, again, also won't have to do much fighting. But we do have a sally out here. Oh, no, not a sally out. We've just got some forces moving over by the Alverni. He's got some Osworn and some Spear Nobles. And they're going to... Uh, actually, they look like they are going to go outside. I don't know what's going on. He keeps moving them around this gate. I just move them over and uh, focus down the Seleucids if possible. But yes, if you are enjoying the content at the moment, please do remember to leave a like, subscribe, and a comment to show your support. Um, we're doing really well at the moment with growth, and let's just keep it up, and let's try and get to that 2,000 mark at, as soon as possible. As the Seleucids, not Seleucids, the Carthaginians are now fighting the Swaby. There's Libyans against the around shields. I'm going to say the people in, like, basically no clothes are probably going to lose to the men in uh, armor. That's just, that's just an educated guess, to be honest. But uh, we'll have to see what happens here. I mean, these round shields are getting pretty beaten up. They've been forced back by the Libyans. Who are forcing way through as more Libyans come in, really just forcing a way through. Oh, we got some. Uh, sounds like we got some uh, fe female. You've got some hex bearers, yeah, some hex bearers in it. Okay, Libyan infantry actually are losing. Um, I presume the hex bearers might have done some abilities, possibly. I don't know. We've got chosen swords in it now. Um, I want to get some archers to focus down some of these blobs. I mean, they actually should get their archers to focus down the Gallic hunters and stuff that are inside. Uh, just inside the walls. We've got Cretan archers here getting really beaten up. Um, are these chosen spears here? And I presume these are berserkers. We've already got berserkers in combat. Wow. Um, really forcing back more Libyans. So Carthage really taking on the brunt of, uh, well, two of the armies. Got the Swavi and the Arverni in here really battling out. It's kind of very chaotic. No real distinguishable battle lines at the moment. As uh, some more spear nobles come in by the looks of it. So our Verney really uh, dedicating a lot of troops. So these spin uh, chosen spears, in fact. And there you go. First route, we've got some Libyans gone. We've got round shield swords gone. I'd say that's certainly a win for the... Uh, for the I was about to say Arverni, but it's the Swaby. Because uh, well, these round shields are certainly worth less than those Libyans. We've got a Libyan Peltas now in combat. Don't know whether that was a misclick or what. These guys in combat. Uh, that's not going to end so well. They're... It's even at the moment, but they don't want to keep them in there forever. Mercenary Noble Fighters coming in now. We've got Cavalry, Iberians in here. Looks like it was a, had a small fight with Rome and uh, the Kush uh, player. But, I mean, these Astarte certainly did not come out on top there. But, yes, I mean, these Eagle Cohort leading the way. That will certainly do some damage. Uh, and these guys certainly going up towards Kush. Certainly will go well. They haven't got many Armored Showtails, I'm just seeing. Only a couple, which is a really strong unit um, for Kush. But they've got a lot of show tells, but not many armoured. So it'll be interesting to see um, how Kush does not having its strongest unit on the battlefield. 
But I mean, it looked... Oh, jeez, I didn't even see this. Carthage really needs to move his pikes. He's got one here on 60 men to give focus down. Yeah, who is this? This is the Gallic uh, Hunters all the way back here firing down these pikemen. And they're wavering. No, that's a huge loss for Carthage. Carthage is having a really hard start. I mean, he needs to get his troops. He's got troops so far back. Like, he's got... Are these archers? Yeah, archers all the way back here. He needs to get them closer. So his gap between resupplying his lines isn't so, like, delayed. We'll put it like that. Rome might need to go and help and support him, to be honest. Hastai might be enough to help push back against some of these troops. Chosen swords in here. We've got berserkers as well. Here we go. Some sort of definition of a, of a line. Yeah, and there you go. They're falling back. And there you can see the bodies revealed and the men that are beneath them crawling away back to their own lines, the wounded. There's berserkers, yeah, they're, I think they're just in to hold the line now. Rome is making a strong push now down the center of the Seleucids, still taking the time getting inside. I did not see this. Okay, so there was a sally out, as we expected, um, and it was cavalry, it was not cavalry, it was infantry. An interesting little attack. So Tarentine cavalry, I don't know why they engaged. These elephants and Azat knights will certainly clear up these uh, this infantry here. You do imagine. But yeah, I don't know why they sent out these units. There's no need. I know it was a kind of a... It would have been an interesting tactic, but some really elite units are sending out. And these Oswald... I mean, they haven't lost much, in fairness. But I mean, they certainly want to get these Tarantines to certainly circle around and do some more Javis and stuff like that. What's back here? Silver Shield Pikes. These guys are really far back. He, these players need to get their troops, like, close together. You move, move up as an army. Instead of just sending bit by bit in. What we've got here? Hillmen inside. They're not going to be able to break through. We've got Thorax here. Syrian archers. Interesting to see what happens, but these are, yeah, these elephants are doing well. As are the Azat Knights. I mean, yeah, are these guys losing decisively? Certainly the uh, swords are. So I'll watch some elephant action. Not as many as in the uh, one with the Sassanid Sally. If you haven't seen that uh, siege battle, I definitely go recommend watching that. It is a very funny, and actually kind of is pretty epic uh, siege battle. With a lot of elephants. This elephant's not even doing anything. They're not even really attacking. They want to possibly pull those elephants out and recharge them. Here we go. They're going. They're being re-engaged, I think, now. I think they were re-engaging some stuff down here, but they're really not. There you go. They're beating these guys up now. Beating them up. You want to get these cavalry in and do, like, a uh, charge in the rear. But, I mean, yeah, these elephants here uh, taking damage from probably from the arch tower. But as that's been going on, Rome has engaged against Kush. And we've also got Arverni over here. What have we got in here? We've just got some Principes. So cheap unit. We've not got the uh, Marian stuff in yet. We've still got the pre-Marian stuff going in first. Um, yeah, and these guys, I think, are just going to get cleaned up by Kush. And uh, on the other side, Carthage has been... Uh, Allowed to survive a little bit. He's kind of a... He's broke inside here, but he's got another solid defense he's got to worry about here. Basically, Arvoni's got all his like, available forces here. I would personally start getting archers up to about here. Like, just behind here. Start firing into these blobs. Hit their archers. Take them out. Shoot any troops that are not looking the right way. We've got artillery in here. Oh, we've got Rome's artillery. That's really good. We've got Roman energy, and It's focusing down this like blob over here. Really good spot. So, it forces them back from the choke point. We should allow Karshis to send up some more like Salmonite warriors into this breach. And then he can capture this one and push. Start uh, and then rejoin up with this lot here. And then he can take this area and start a push down this street here. Which is still really well defended. It's going to come down to Seleucid. Seleucid's got to um, make the map bigger. And by, me by that I mean just like he's got to start doing flanking maneuvers over here. Um, like around here. Go up here just... Make the map bigger. Make the defenders have to defend on more areas. Because right now the map is actually... Like for the size of the map, it's actually really small what they're using. They're using like just that area if you follow my cursor. Like that area there. Instead of using uh, like the entire map. And that's to the advantage of the defenders, not the attackers. So as an attacker, you want to make the map as big as possible. But not like... Obviously you've got to get it just right. So it's not too big that you're overstretched. Uh, but you want to stretch the defenders just enough. Like, sometimes breaking through with sheer will will not be enough. Like, it just won't be enough. Because defenders will bring pikes, and they'll have really strong units. Like, Shota Warriors is still a strong unit, 
Like, they've got Hillman in here, and they're routing already. And they've got archers up here on, on this flank here. And they've got Javis as well. I didn't even realize these guys, these Shota Warriors will get a lot of kills with these Javis. Can we have another volley with the Javis? Maybe. But, I mean, yeah, there you go. That is a nice Javi thrown to the side there. And those Hillmen, which are, like, unprotected. They've got no armor. They're getting destroyed. But they are slowly taking areas. I mean, Seleucids and Rome have jo joined up. Rome is sort of helping Carthage, and Seleucids send stuff over as well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see um, if they can break through these lines. I'm hearing more, like, hits of uh, the artillery. How are the uh, troops out here doing against the elephants? Not so hot. Uh, we've lost a few elephants as well. So, I'd say that's an okay win. As soon as they start to lose elephants, these guys, uh, they start to drop a little bit more. Like, as soon as you lost one, they all start to drop a little bit. But, I mean, this cavalry over, over here should clean them up. It did seem silly to sally against the only army that really brought considerable, like, cavalry force. Seems a bit, seems a bit of a silly move, but it sort of worked. It sort of worked. It's like these, oh, that looks awesome, this guy here, just in the sun bathing down on them. But yeah, I mean, I think they need to get the uh, elephants back in. Just charge them back in. You can route these guys. It also looks like uh, Gallic Hunter's coming over here. And they're probably going to co come over and try and scare these uh, elephants. Not a bad idea. To be honest, fighting it this close to the wall is never that, that advantageous for the attacker. You want to attack a bit further away, so the arch towers don't help. But I mean, yeah, now we've got the uh, archers here. What are these? These just Kushai archers, so they're pretty, pretty... Um, Average. I mean, they're still good. Uh, any archers on this flank will do okay. Probably racking up a couple of kills here and there. But yeah, you can see here, Seleucid sending his Thorax sword round. This is what he's got to do. I mean, he's defend probably just defending his flank, but he needs to start sending stuff around here. There's not much over here. There's actually nothing here entirely. And he might want to send infantry over just to capture this so he can get his cavalry inside. And his elephants. But yeah, the uh, there we go. We've got the archers coming outside. I'll have to see whether the elephants can... Uh, they'll probably get scared off ever so quick. Well, they'll get scared off really quickly. Probably. But, I mean, Carthage actually has made a bit of a push here. And he's actually... I think he's not killed much here. They've just given up the ground. So that's kind of smart by um, Arverni and Swaby. Because, well, why stand there and just let the artillery hit you? And you can fall back to this spot. I mean, the artillery can now just fire down this entire street here, which is a really blocked up street, but why not just defend it? Also, it means they only have to defend one choke point instead of two, which they had to before. So it'll be interesting to see where they can hold here. I mean, it's going to take a lot of uh, sheer weight to get through here. They're going to need archers up here. Are the attackers? They're going to need artillery. They're going to need a lot of heavy infantry. I mean, they're breaking through the Charon shield, but then the next line's Warden has spears and the Oath Sworn. We've already got the Arverni General in here, and he's got three units back here. Like, that could go in instead. They're all pretty beaten up. Actually, Arverni's nearly out of the game. He's got a few units left. He's got Oathsworn and some Chosen Swords that are fresh and had some archers, but really, he's kind of out of units. I mean, his archers here, though, might just clinch it in this fight against... Uh, yeah, his cavalry's actually all going to die. He's going to have to send the elephants in. But he might rout the elephants with fire arrows. And that being a general, that's not a good sign. And there you go, uh, routing that unit there also. Oh, yeah, elephant's dropping though. Another one drops. Another one bites the dust. And another one down. Um, but yeah, I'm sure a few more might die before they f finish routing both these two units. But I mean, these two units are finished anyway. Like, as, an as the general, like, the damage has been done. I wouldn't have sent these guys in. Like, these units are literally, like, worth nothing now. And that's more elephants dying. Another one dead already. I'll come back to that and see whether any more elephants have died, or we might just get told, oh, the enemy general is dead, or routing, or what. And that'll knock Seleucid basically out of the game really early on. Here we go, Rome fighting Arverni. A classic uh, sort of matchup, really. It seems like the Arverni is supposed to like represent the Singatorics or whatever. But I mean, yeah, these are. Uh... Oh, okay. So it looks like they're trying to focus down the Onager crew. With their own onager, possibly? Oh, yeah, they got their own. Uh, that's a Celtic, uh, Celtic uh, scorpion. Have they got a. Something a bit heavier? Something a bit like. It might be that. It might be. 
So we've got the Roman Ollinger here ready. He's just focusing his downstuff here. I mean, if they can break through here, which Romans could do quite a lot quicker than, uh, well, than the Seleucids, they could entrap most of this. That would be really, really good. But Bounce Power, it's very close still. We've got Pikes now coming up. I thought they were Roman Pikes for a moment. I was like, what? But here we go. Silver Shield's coming up. And these guys will uh, certainly help push back the Kush and the Spear Nobles, which are already losing Spear Nobles. So, don't know if these Pikes are really necessarily needed. And see, it. there you go. Because the Pikes are turning up, it's forcing them back. They've already decided, no, nope, we're not going to fight there. And they're actually going to fall back. There's like a huge fallback. By, um, really, I mean... Yeah, Carth needs to get a move on. He doesn't really want these pikes in the front line. Yeah, he's not done a very good job with his pikes, his Carthage, I won't lie. Um, he's been too aggressive there. He's too passive earlier and just let them get killed. Yeah, these uh, Shota Warriors here are just dying. Oh, this will be a good little f spot here. This is a really good spot because now the pikes aren't like head on something. They've got some flanks available. Um, this is still very doable by the attackers. If they send two swords into like here... One into here and one into here. And then the pikes on the center. They can de defend the flanks of the pikes. But there you go. The breakthrough has happened. And those Shota Warriors are being murdered. And did the elephant... The elephant's routed. Seleucids has lost his general. Already. That is huge. Okay, I'm going to say... Um, unless they can get, like, the Arverni general soon. Like... They could be in trouble. I mean, Seleucus barely committed many of his... Actually, I don't know. Seleucus committed quite a lot of his troops, actually. Actually, Seleucus is nearly out before Carthage. Uh, really, I mean, Seleucus has got a lot of his troops engaged. He's got pikes. I mean, the thing is, he's got pikes which are going to be really helpful. They're actually going to win on this flank here. Probably with the help of that loss of general. Um, but yeah, the attack's having a really rough time. I mean, I would definitely, if I was Rome, get more Eagle Cohort in it. He's going to have to defend this flank. He's already sending Princapades over there. I mean, he's doing well by just slowly sending in his troops and bit by bit. Realizing that he's not going to need blobs. He's just got to have enough troops in there to do the, jo do the job. So we've got Thorax swords in there. We've got pikes in there. You can see them poking through. Got Romans, of course, and there you go, they're giving ground again. And now Carthage and Rome are, well, united. I mean, they could unite anyway, but they've united on their fronts. And now this threatens, obviously, this Kushite front here. And they may already be forced up, might the uh, defenders almost like, I don't know, they might have to fall back to here and then fall back to here. It'll be hard to, hard to defend, like, I mean, they've got a lot of troops left. It's going to be a hard assault. I mean, I'm interested to see what the Scorpion's doing. It's not got the greatest of angles, in fairness. Um, but that's just that's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it can hit some of these guys here, but I'd want to save this ammo a little bit more. Yeah, it's like hitting stuff all the way back here. It's like shooting these archers. Not a bad target, but save it. Save the ammo. And we've got some uh, balls of death here, some fiery balls of death. They will be useful. I'm sure to warriors ready to defend them already. Jeez, we've got pikes from Kush. Barely used up yet. Um, this is a bit valiant by um, Kush here. He's just sending two units of Shota Warriors to their death. Got Prinkapes facing them on one side. But little do they know that they are about to get flanked by some Romans. I mean, they're fighting some Kush. Is that archers back there? It is. Hopefully they were out of ammo because uh, they might need every bow they can get. But did I see one of these units losing? Yeah, one's losing and one is uh, in combat even against Prinkapes, who are losing. I didn't think, didn't think Prinkapes would beat Shota Warriors. But they, I mean, Rome could do with just flanking this soon. I mean, here you go. Prinkapes coming in. Some beating up units. They'll do just fine. Just fine. And they're actually going to turn a unit around to go and face him. It's a smart idea is Kush. His units should do okay holding against both these sides for a little while. And here we go. In go they go. Fighting a horde of tired Prinkapes. That's another thing. These guys are tired compared to the uh, Shotel. So they actually might do okay.
Imagine coming up against someone with that weird, like, scythe shaped sword. You just be like, what the heck are you using that for? And where do you buy one of those? <laughs> I want one. Uh, but yeah, they're actually losing decisively, so that is a shame. And there you go. All the attackers, or oh, I'm sorry, all the defenders have been forced off. And the Scorpion, I hope it's out of ammo because it's going in the wrong direction. Um, they've got artillery here. I wonder if they're trying to snipe. No, they are definitely was a misclick. This thing is going back up the hill. They really need to go and take that out. How have the attackers not seen that? They need to take this unit out. Could be huge having that Scorpion at the end of the game. But yeah, Rome bringing in the rest of his army now. Look at that. Column formation of all these Romans. That is magnificent. Le the eagles and the standards coming by. And there you go. The legions walking inside. We've got the general as well. Got a lot of fresh units in the Praetorian Guard. We've got Eagle Cohort. There's some nasty stuff still to go up against those attackers, in fairness. Ah, there you go. That's what I was looking for. There is a... I thought I could hear, like, a nasty, like, sort of large thing hitting. That wasn't the Roman uh, Onger. We have an insanely good angle for this African Onager. I do apologize. Um, like, just going in here and trying to hit all this in here. It's actually missing quite a lot. It's a long way to go. Oh, hit that guy, though. That bounced off there and hit that poor man. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not a bad idea to go for this. It's a big blob. Oof, they're hitting a few guys. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad, but I'd get the move on. I'd save the ammo. Save the ammo, move it, and get it to, like, here, and then you could fire down onto this area here. But, I mean, yeah, these are the tiny units that survived the uh, attack from the elephants. They might not make it back, <laughs> sadly. But yeah, Seleucus is almost out. He's got pikes left. I don't know why he's sending his pikes up so eagerly. I want to keep them in reserve. So I think the Romans need to take over and take the assault uh, head on, really. I mean, in fairness, first thing I do is send up some weak units um, that are nearly dead. Go and just force your way past this uh, wall of fireballs. And then you send up a fresh unit um, to hold the line um, just before the weak units break. And then this whole defense they have is kind of undone a bit. They have a lot of troops back here. Which they need to get as many archers as possible to focus these guys down. I don't think they've got masses of archers left at the defenders. And they've used been using ammo like freely. But yeah, here we go. This is what I'm saying. They've got to send up a tiny unit of Libyan infantry like that. These pikes should go nowhere near that front line. Um, oh, we've got fire. Uh, we've got shots going off from the Onager there. Hitting those armor show warriors. Not a bad target at all. It's good angle. Actually, it's not a bad angle. Did I see some... Ga oh, this is going to be... This is going to be bad, though. Got some Gallic Hunters here, and they're going to sneak around and get this Onager. That was a really good play there by the Arverni player. And they're just like, don't mind us. We're going to come around the back, and we're going to just shoot you in the backs. And yeah, there you go. You can see the unsuspecting Onager crew. Nothing to defend it. Why would you think to defend it? There, there's uh, no... You've cleared out this entire area. But there you go. Some archers are now going up quickly. They're going to fire a fire volley in there. And they catch one of the onagers alight. And some of the men. Which have somehow brushed off being on fire. And there you go. We've got the uh, fireballs of justice going off. I think they went off as the small unit went up there. So like I said, a really good play. I mean, these uh, archers are focusing down the silver shields. They need to be careful about that. I'd start sending up more troops. Start sending up more troops. Um, maybe not these pikes. i keep them... I'd start moving them back. Yeah, so really well done there. They took out one of the onagers. Um, but yeah, these they need to just keep someone over here. Keep an eye on these guys. It does look like the pike's going to go up next, which I think is a bad move. Keep them late game, because otherwise Kush has got the, a pike advantage. I know his pikes aren't great, um, being medium. But they'll do okay. They're pikes. Pikes are pikes. I've got lots of Kush high archers up here. But yeah, not much action going on. We're having a little bit of a build-up, it would seem. So I may just do a cut and, uh, well, actually, we're going to have a little bit of engagement here. A tiny little engagement. Oh, yeah, some poor Oast one about to get cut down by some Prinkabase. Do you feel sorry for them a little bit? I know how, I know, that, like, Oast one are elite and all, but, I mean... You're outnumbered. You surely would just give up. You'd be like, yeah, that's it. GG. Okay, and here we go. We're going to have some uh, Peltas already going up. Living Peltas straight up. So maybe there's going to be no need for cut. I think they're just getting ready now to uh, move up. Um, but yeah, those Peltas definitely pulled through. Uh, I, I can't say anything other than that. 
they, they, they definitely pull through. Um, so that's a bit cheesy by the uh, Carthaginian player. And, I mean, he's going to lose this unit, though, for it. I mean, he is actually nearly breaking the slave infantry, infantry unit of Kush. But, I mean, they were going to get broken by the Thorax anyway. I don't know why he's pushing up a tiny unit of Libyan Peltas. It's just a bit of a stupid decision. Because they're just going to go and die. They, he silenced the Kushite Archer for all of about two seconds. Now we've got more Kushite Archers coming in here. They're coming to fight some uh, Thorax. I don't know why he's getting these Kushite Archers so close. They've still got ammo. I can see their bows are out. There we go. Some, uh, some poor... Kushite archers being forced to die on the swords of uh, Thorax, basically. They need to send more up. I mean, they're just. Seleucus is quite happily also just letting his general. Oh, uh, not his general, his uh, pikes die. The general actually did die. I did think he just routed, but he did actually fully die. And there we go. We've got the uh, Roman general running down some Galakundus. That's not a bad idea. Get him used and actually doing some stuff. Is there any cavalry unit left? I'm pretty sure. Apart from possibly Carthage's. Yeah, Carthage's got a general bodyguard. But I mean, they're all really tucked up on here, the defenders. If I was um, like one of the attackers, I'd start to send some stuff around here to just give yourself another avenue to attack, possibly. But I mean, pushing all the way up here is going to be absolutely brutal, we'll put it like that. They need to get pikes and swords up here, do a coordinated attack, so it forces them back off this hill. But yeah, they sent up, that Thorax sword just went up on its own and died. Like, it was fine going up and killing these archers, but it should have waited for more. They're going to send their army up bit by bit, the attackers, and they're going to die. Um, I mean, balance power is not in favor of the defenders now. I'd say it's in favor of the attackers, but only just. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a quick cut. Uh, because it looks like it's going to just be a big skirmish phase here uh, until we like have some sort of movement going on. So I'll see you guys in a moment. So we are back and we have a clash of infantry. We have the Hastati coming uh, in to fight some spear nobles. That's not going to end well. We've got archers up here, some Syrians, um, which are presumably out of ammo. We've got Princapes as well coming to fight. And I think we've got some. Oh, we've got lots of Hastati. Yeah, here we go. Rome setting up the first wave. The first true wave and some Seleucids just taking part because, you know, they want they want to be involved. They've, they've lost the general. They've got to be involved. And we've got a really good line here. We've got uh, pikes. We've got spears in front of that. It's going to be nasty. We've got some archers in here as well. But, yeah, these are... Uh, this is going to be a hard line to break through. I mean, this is a thick line as well. Thick with, thick with three Cs. And there you can see the arrows flying overhead. Try, I'm not sure why they're not going for these pikes. That's all that you've got to worry about as the attacker. Look at how bloodied up these guys are. They've seen a lot of action. The banner here just like, rally to me, men. We shall fight to the end for Rome, for the glory of Rome. But yeah, I mean, I'm seeing a bit of breaking. Chosen swords and breaking. Spear nobles breaking. Um, they've got another unit of spear cho uh, chosen spears here, though, ready for them. And then pikes. Then wooden spears. And they're, they're pretty short then on other stuff. I mean, they've got plenty of swords. No spears, necessarily, but they've got plenty of swords. Armored Shotel's still here, which is going to be a real problem for Rome, Carthage, and Seleucid to break through. They've got really good armor piercing of Kush with their swords. So that is an issue. As arrows come flying overhead. As the spears will come up there and... Looks like we've got... Oh, that's a nice little tactic there going on by Carthage. He's got these men in column formation. Got some mercenary uh, noble fighters. They're getting it in behind. And here you go. Some armor shotels going up. They're going to go and counter that. 
No bad idea. Trying to like just bring another avenue to the fight. And it, I mean, you can see here the swords are break, uh, flanking on round. We've got some. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's an Oathsworn unit going in here. They're also trying to help the fight. It's becoming a bit of a mess again in this uh, choke point. No real lines of uh, engagement. And the Romans forcing back a lot of these troops. Kush is actually... Where is his pike unit gone? It's uh, being for forced back, I guess, through archers. If they can do the same on the other side. Like, now, they can just... Like, this Roman unit here should go flanking to the side of these uh, Kushite pikes hard. Oh, I do apologize. Sneezing. Getting uh, some illness, possibly. No. I am... Don't go outside to see people to get any illnesses. But yeah, I mean, it does look like uh, Kush has, with that Shotel uh, unit gone in, has halted any sort of advance by Carthage on his flank. And Rome is sort of being held up. I don't really know why. I mean, there's pikes here, but he's not really even engaging the pikes. I think it's just a few units, a few men of these uh, Kushite troops here. But I mean, they need to get these pikes in it and actually work in... Like, properly of these uh, silver shields. Like, they could take out... 40 silver shields could take out 90 Kushite. The Kush troops are useless. Silver shields here, they could force back and kill these Kushite pikes. They should. They are heavy, or they're very heavy against medium. They need to get them moving now, because they're getting focused on by arrows all the way off on this hill. That is an insane... They can't even really see them. They are literally firing blind at these Kushite archers. They are firing blind. All they know is that they've been told by some guy... Um, that there's, uh, there's pikes down there, and they just know where they are as the camera goes. They're really weird there. But they are slowly breaking, uh, pushing up this hill, are the attackers. Ever so slightly. They're going to need to send up, and they've still got really good stuff. But they are going to need to send it up, is what I was about to say. They've got Praetorians, lots of Praetorians. Eagle cohort, plenty of them. Is this artillery still got ammo? It does. Oh, that's going to be huge. Don't get it too close that it's uh, going to get focused on by archers. Like these guys here. Or, uh, I mean, we've got African energy there, but that's out of ammo. These, uh, Kushaya just got ammo? That's a no. They have their swords out. These, but, longbow. Oh, these longbows have, uh, ammo, though. They will certainly be useful in, uh, taking out that onager. Rome is, uh, breaking here, though. That is not good. They're gonna need to send something up. We've got a tiny spear nobles here. But they're flanking around now. They're gonna surround these pikes. And here we go. These, uh, Seleucids are in trouble. And the, the uh, Wooden Spears are coming forward, as are the Kushite Pikes, and they're really forcing them back now. With the archers firing in, this is uh, not a good spot to be in, let's put it like that. If I was the attackers, I'd be focusing fire into the side of this uh, attack now. Make them punish. Oh my gosh, you see the arrows coming in, it's like 10 to 20 men drop every time. But yeah, the Pikes are evaporated. The Hastasi here evaporated. And well done by the defenders. They have forced back another wave, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're going to need to send up more stuff. What have they got here? Mercy Salmonites. I don't know why you're not sending up them first. They're not as good as the uh, as the uh, Mercy Nobles, in my opinion. They're good. They're just like a shock infantry unit, almost. Heavy shock infantry unit. Yeah, there you go. Fire point blank range in these guys. They're going to they're gonna come really close uh, to your front lines. Punish them. Here we go. We're coming. The general for... Uh, Carthage is coming up. What a bizarre move. Get him back. Get him back. That's silly. Get him back. Carthage is getting a bit too excited now. They've still got plenty to break through here, the uh, the attackers. And Kush has got stuff all the way back here. Like, you're, t you're kidding me. These units are all like fairly fresh. And he's got show to worry back here. Oh dear. They're going to have a real issue of getting through that. I mean, yeah, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But you now got Eagle Cohort up here. They'll help break through. I mean, they, but you've got to break through pikes. And here we go. The uh, Onager's up. Nice and close. <clears throat> so yeah, here we go. The imminent death. And what's it hitting? He's going for Arch... Oh, no. He's going for Show to Warriors back here. Go for the pikes. I swear... To yeah, no. I think it is trying to go for pikes. It's just so close. 
They really need to... And the pikes are wavering. Four to, yeah, oh, that was a really good hit on the blob there. That was a really good hit. The thing is, still trying to focus on these armored showtels. Getting focused on, but yeah, they need to go after those. Why are they shooting the infantry? Shoot these uh, onagers. They are, like, the real issue here. But yeah, we've got wavering Kushites. Just huge blobs here getting hit. Just keep firing here. If they can kill the Arverni General. Oh, that was a really good hit. I must have killed like 20 odd men. And another one. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I would not be surprised if the uh, Arverni General is dead. Oh, he's not somehow. He's somehow not dead. Another really good hit. Yeah, they need to take out that Onager like really, really soon. And the Romans are, yeah, they're starting to turn around. I mean, fire arrows down here are not helping the situation for the attackers. Damaging morale, but I mean, there's a solid line now of evil cohort here. But if they fire into this blob here, the attackers, that will be devastating. Germans, Gauls, men from southern, like Ethiopia almost, trying to hold back the might of Rome. And if we know, if you know anything, Rome will Rome will win. <laughs> Rome beat them all. Um, but yeah, it does look like the Libyan uh, infantry that's left is getting forced back. There's not much left. I mean, it does look like Rome is sending Praetorians. He's sending a crack force of troops that will go around here. Flank, not a bad idea. As long as he's got enough, if Carthage is going to dedicate the rest of his stuff here, that's fine. But yeah, I mean, it is actually getting quite close. This is not a thin line. I mean, there's some Onagers, uh, Onagers ammo left, I presume. If they can hit, just get one good hit in here, I beg. One good hit. Manual fire. Get in that blob there. That'll cause a chain route. I'm sure of it. There you go. The Berserkers actually now in here, forcing the Romans back a bit. But yeah, the Romans being forced to give ground. Look how, you can just see where all the bodies are, where all the, like, it's all been fought over. It's a nasty hill to come up. I mean, the defenders really should have fought more for this crest of the hill. But yeah, I mean, these uh, defenders are doing, o doing okay. I mean, they're now going to send stuff obviously back over this way because they can see this crack force of Praetorians coming up. And we've got cavalry coming over as well. The German, the general, sorry, I was about to say the Germans. The Germans are coming. In any scenario, the Germans are always coming. Uh, and in this one, I guess they are, because the Swabia here. But I mean, yeah, these uh, longbow hunters going up there, getting the fire arrows down. Just devastating. I'm sure all the archers for, like, the uh, defenders got, like, an insane amount of kills if they've been up there. And there you go, just berserkers. Oh, there he goes, dead. He goes into the masses of dead Ro of Romans and gets killed. Yeah, I mean, these evil cohort doing okay, holding their ground. I mean, they're losing decisively here. They might want to send someone up. Mercury Noble Fires, I'd send them uh, possibly back in. The sword masters here. If I was the old just start focusing down the uh, general for Swaby. And also, send in this unit on the flank again. It really scared them last time. Why not do it again? They've got plenty more troops coming here. More Praetorians coming up this way. Don't know why they send a tiny unit of Pr Princapes back in. That could just do with going in there. It's such a mess in here, though. So many units. But I hope you guys are enjoying it. It certainly is a, an epic grind at the moment. There is not much going on apart from that. I can't, there's not much to commentate on. Um, but I'm sure that... Has Kush sent back his three units to show tells? Just thinking of that, about that. No, he hasn't. He's having to send him to over armored show tells. He's got another one in the area, show to warrior. But it looks like it's going to be uh, the Swaby that are going to be dedicated to defend this area. We've got Night Hunters, a good unit, a hidden unit. Uh, we've got... Are they... They're Light Spears. Okay, we've got some Sword Masters and some more Sword Masters. They should hold the line okay. But against Praetorians, I don't think they, they're going to do just... They'll probably do okay, but not that well. Very heavy against heavy, but these guys are fresh. And Kush has his general here. That's actually a really strong general unit. You might want to keep that alive. Might be a good use of cavalry in the end. I don't know why Carthage keeps setting up his general. No need. It's just asking for him to be shot. But yeah, if they can flank around here, 
That would be really good. I mean, they're having to, well, they're sitting in here. Hex bearers. Here we go. We're going to have some angry, angry women going in. Into a pike line. That's not going to end well. Pike line and Praetorians. A good mix. Pike line and Praetorians. And they're cheering because they routed something, I presume. Yeah, they routed African pikemen, 37. Uh, well, to be honest, those pikemen just got badly used all game, I personally think. They got, like, just abused. And they've got spear nobles here. This tiny unit of spear nobles just chilling here. Syrian archers all breaking. 58 of them breaking, jeez. Um, yeah, that's tiny unit of spear nobles might be needed. Might indeed be needed. As more show tells get put into the front line. They are thinning them out a little bit, though, these Romans. They're certainly on this side as well. If they make a push here, these wooden spears are not really uh, going to be able to stop all of this. Yeah, this side needs to really push hard. The Romans are looking good. Romans are looking really good. It's this flank that's going to define it. I personally think just keep these Romans here. Don't attack. Just stay here. They're just forcing all these units to stay here. They're, you're going to win on this flank. Um, at the moment, anyway, they need to be... Oh, no. Kush has spotted uh, Rome's general what he's trying to do. I would just not have done this with Rome's general. Keep Rome's general really safe. He's a rubbish unit. I mean, if you pull him down here, that's great. Yeah, he is. Okay, smart. Please do. Um, so, yeah, pull Rome's general down here and then get him back here. Support, so, he's supported by infantry. So, if they try anything with this Kushite general... He's in for a rough time. But yeah, the Romans are going in here now. We've got Praetorians going up against Swordmasters. I'm going to say it's going to be an even fight. I think Praetorians would win it in a normal scenario. But they're really tired. So, compared to the fresh Swordmasters. So, I think numbers will drop for the Praetorians a lot quicker. Uh, but yeah, it does look like Kush is not going to commit his general, which is good. Good for them. So, whoever you're rooting for, it's good that Rome sent back his general and Kush sent back his. But yeah, you can see there, Praetorians losing decisively. It's because they're tired. Like I said, they didn't need to attack over here. Just stand and look at them. It's all you need to do. I mean, actually, Swordmaster losing decisively as well. Neither side wants to win. Put it like that. And the spinner was actually are moving now. <laughs> they're finally moving. They're taking fire and wavering. <laughs> oh, dear. Bless them. Bless them. Um, but I mean, is there any pikes left in it? Oh yeah, Kush has still got pikes. But yeah, they really needed to push early to Rome on this flank because there was just the warden that spears. The uh, Chota warriors weren't here. They could have got inside and they would have done a good, good job taking those guys out. Spear against sword and it's Roman swords. So they always do well there. But what a battle, what a grind at this like choke point here. Just devastating. Does look like the first of the Eagle cohorts is going to wave though at 38 men. What have they got in reserve? Okay, they've got plenty. They've got Samnites still to go in. It's going to be close. If I was Rome, I wouldn't send more stuff over here, really. But he is, so... That, that's a thing. Because eventually he's going to run out of fresh troops. So, like, these two units of Prinkapes, just... They're not scary, being here. The more Praetorians coming in. I just stand them there for a bit. Stay fresh. They're going to throw Javis into the back of their own lines. So much friendly fire there. And that guy, I've just seen a guy with a shield, like, filled with arrows. Oh, he's... Uh, not arrows. Uh, yeah, there he is. Look at him. He's got so many pillum in his shield. He has literally become a hedgehog. And he's got one in his back. How many did he... Look how many... Oh, my gosh. So many of these guys look like... Like, half a dozen pillum. This guy's now become the new hedgehog. I name you Sonic. As he goes on. Carries on his fight. I mean, yeah, these guys are losing decisively. 
Yeah, Praetorians are losing decisively as well. I think, uh, as well, you can tell, neither side is going to win from that. I mean, neither arm, neither like attackers or defenders, neither side is win like winning this. They've lost so many men each. Whoever does truly win this is not really a winner. They are also a loser. I mean, everyone's a loser in war. Unless you win it really, really, really decisively and lose, like, I don't know, hardly any men. And, like, win a lot of land or, I don't know, lots of money, I guess, maybe. Then you may have won. Uh, these bows, though, are going in. They've, got, they've uh, still got their bows out, so that means they still have ammo. And they're dying. Oh, what a waste. I think they still had ammo and they could have uh, they could have been huge being in there. But these Praetorians, I don't know why they're flanking on here. They need to get around. Well, or they don't need to get around and the Samurai need to get around. I think Averni's lost his general. No, he's still alive. Well, he's still alive, but I don't know if he's actually alive in the unit. I mean, these Swordmasters now are just doing what the Praetorians did to them on the other flank. And they're just jabbing them to death. That is painful to see. But yeah, Kush has now got his, uh, his cab over here. Get it between this gap quickly. And then you can get and s outside and surround these guys. And there. He's going to go into... Oh, he's just kind of done a friendly... Ch well, a charge into his own units. And there you go. This flank is gone. It's just these Wadnath Spears holding. It's going to come down to... Well, a couple of units on this side. These Wadnath Spears are not going to hold. It's now the Swordmaster's going to hold this side. And the defenders, they could, I mean, the attackers could get a unit between here. Send your other Samanite up, get it between here, go in for these archers, and then you've got them in real trouble. Please, I beg that the att attacker does it. That would be what I'd be doing now. I, If I was, like, Rome or whoever, I'd be shouting, yes, it's Carthage, send his unit through this gap, and he is. I mean, it's slightly getting stuck, but, yeah, he's, I mean, he should be able to get through. you just got to form column formation, and you avoid that. Oh my gosh, those archers got, like, destroyed. Um, it sort of was a pull through, but I can see what he's doing, so it wasn't atrocious. It sort of was, but it sort of wasn't. It wasn't atrocious. Now, because this one has spears breaking, and now it's uh, the Swordmaster breaking, he can just surround that general, and then these units over here will probably start to break, because their general is dead, and they, like, Swaby has most of the troops left. I mean, it's now Kush and Swaby in here, holding the line. I mean, we've got every single, like, unit in here for Rome now. If they can kill Rome's general, that'll be huge. But, uh, I don't know if they will. I don't know if they will. Where is, uh, Rome's... Oh, he might! He might! Kush has sent his general in to go and kill him. He is, uh, in a bit of trouble here. General is still alive. Kush is, uh, losing. But, I mean, so is the general bodyguard. They need to send a unit back to Rome. Send a unit back. There's nothing to send back. These Princapes were all that was, like, needed back here to hold and keep an eye on Kush. But he sent them in. Rome might lose here. Uh, lose his general here. And that could be huge. These units here need to get a move on. Get up. Get these uh, general bodyguard in here. They send that general bodyguard. They could get it. Go after these sword masters back here. These archers. Get around. Surround the general. Do some charges. These archers need to go up and support. They just need to get everything up. Get every single unit up. How is this Spears Noble still alive and it's wavering? It's going to surely break as soon as it sees its first unit. But yeah, I mean, Rome is in a bit of trouble. What is out here? Oh, that's just the... Uh, the artillery. Okay. But yeah, Rome is in... Oh, Rome's lost his general. And everything's starting to rout. The defenders might get it. They might win it on this flank. It might come down to literally like... Well, what wins here? And... What wins on the other side, which looks like it's going to be Swaby's going to die on the far on the other side, but he's going to win here with a, a bit of Kush. Kush's general is literally what's holding this together, I think, right now. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a good charge. Oh, that's devastating. Those Praetorians may break. Having lost their general. No, they're still holding. Jeez. And melee even. Um, yeah, I mean, Kush wants to be careful here with his general. Might want to pull him out. Yep, smart. Do another one. And there you go. The Swordmasters are dead, so Swaby's in a spot of trouble now. And they're surrounding here. I mean, Carthage has got his general still alive, thankfully. Even though he was the most aggressive, probably, with his. And here we go, another charge. These Praetorian Guard, I don't know what they're doing. They need to do something. 
Give them an attack order. There you go, another charge. Brutal charge from the Kush Cavalry. They're just going to keep doing this until this Praetorian Guard just dies. I mean, it's taking a lot to kill them, though. I mean, there you go, down the 66. That's a huge one. There you go. Huge win there. Going to break that unit. But yeah, I mean, look at this. This is not good. All these units just being funneled through this tiny little spot. Go through the other spots. It's aqueduct. It's got lots of holes. It's a holy building. Not a holy, but a holy building. They can surround these swordmasters a lot quicker. They're making it easy for the swordmasters. These longbows have got swordmasters here. Got a knight under still. Fresh. And they still got armor shotels here, which is a big, big unit. But, I mean, its balance power is massively in favor of uh, Rome, apparently. Rome and his allies. Um, I'm not so sure about that. They've got cavalry left as the attack of the defenders. And they've got some pretty fresh units. I mean, there's an eye under the light, but they'll do okay. I would have thought. The Salmonites are fairly fresh, I imagine. And they're mercenary nobles. Where are the Salmonites? There they are. Yeah, they're pretty fresh. Yeah, it's just a bit of a mess now in this final little bit of engagement. Swaby fighting Carthage. It's actually Carthage who had the roughest start that's going to probably define who wins this uh, fight. Rome did take on the uh, mantle take for quite a while, took on the burden. Um, but, you know, he's he's lost all his troops now, and including his general, which I think he should have kept on the other side where he's winning. Didn't need to send him over here with his Praetorian little... Uh, Spec Ops Force. And this has looked like a bit of a push through. Oh no, they did break the unit. Okay, that's fine. It's really, really close. Where's Kush's general? Are we sending them all the way around? Oh, this might be, that might take too long. I think they might break everything, the Romans, uh, before that happens. Get Carthage's general, like, dead in the middle here. Um, because then the Samnites can keep an eye on him. They still have ammo on their archers. No way, Cretan archers still have ammo. They need to focus on that Oathsworn general. Break him. I know these, they've got no Oathsworn, uh, no troops left. But I'm sure, like, keeping generals alive, like, if you kill them all, that'll cause chain routes. Like, he can just pop abilities and keep that army uh, happy. And there we go. Cretan archers going in, so they must have run out of ammo. It is literally coming down to this. It is literally all this is... That's all that's left. I mean, there's a general out there. I would not keep him there. Kush is coming around with his general. It's 17 against 19. This is very heavy against heavy. Not a good idea. I mean, these, some, these noble fighters need to keep an eye on it. They need to keep an eye on it. Surely he's realized that Kush is coming. Yeah. These noble fighters have got to watch the rear. Get the cavalry here. Just do your own flanks. Do your own flanks. Like, that's what Kush is going to do. He's just going to go around flank. He's exhausted, though. Against Fresh, oh, I don't know. It could be close. I think that Carthage general might have a chance, actually. We've got to send everything in. It is so depleted here. Those armor shooters are losing now. That is huge. And the Night Hunters are losing. That, this could be huge. This is going to be... Like, if they break on... Yeah, okay, they're still losing. I thought they were winning. So there's something winning here. Is it the Romans? I don't know. But, I mean, yeah, this if they break this Kushite unit, that is going to be... GG. I mean, they might get this cavalry here. They're going to charge into the rear of it. There you go. They're going to charge into the back. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Keeping your general just there. And they lost a couple of units from that. Send the archers in. Yeah, they might, they might help. Um, you just got to keep your general in combat now and pray that you win that fight. Send uh, infantry going back. It is going to be so close. Okay, Oswan has lost his general. Or, like, the uh, Arvin has lost his general. It's literally coming down to anything. It pop oh, no, he's not. He's there. They're popping more stuff. Rally. Not a bad idea, but you're looking like they're losing that fight. 14 versus 16. It's really close. Send some infantry in, I beg. Send these um, Samnites back. You're losing your general. Do not care about these small units of Oathsworn. You're going to kill all this. It is coming down to this. I actually think that... I think the attackers have got it. Yeah, they're breaking that unit. They had to. Oh, and there you go. The general for the Kush is breaking. As is that Carthage's, though. And there you go. I mean, everything's breaking there. And there you go. The attackers are going to win. Ever so slightly. There is no winner there. And a costly enemy victory. Uh, indeed.
Kush is very unlucky. So, I mean, yeah, um, that was really, really unlucky. So it was um, Turbo Fisher that sent that in. It was uh, Kush who sent that in. So thank you to him uh, for doing that. It was a, a really, really good battle um, right down to the end. We'll look at his stats first. He got 149 kills with his African Onager, which is not bad at all. His two armored totals getting 183 and 174, which is actually pretty low for them, to be honest. Because, because our normal Shoto's got 190, even better. Uh, but his Pike's 490, it's insane, and his Archer's 229, so not bad there. So well done to Turbo Fisto. And then we have uh, KMT uh, M, who's playing a Swaby. Uh, he probably actually he got the least amount of kills of any army, actually. That was really unfortunate. He was kind of outmatched, his units were. 103 kills over the Swordmasters. His uh, Berserker's in 98, and his archer's not doing so great. It's a bit of a shame, but well played to him. He did a good job. He did his bit, uh, holding the line and slowing down the enemies. And you never know. Uh, there was If he played someone else, the defenders may have won. Who knows? And then we have uh, Nicholas A here, who's playing as the Arverni. He got 120, uh, 128 kills, yeah, with his uh, Scorpion. He got 104 with his Gallic Hunters. His, uh, and then only 111 with Spin Nobles. None of his other infantry units got over 100. A real surprise there. Arverni, I thought, was doing okay. But he, again, just got kind of stomped by Rome. Who was played by a Soga, who we'll look at now. He got 396 kills with his Onager. It's insane. Um, his Archer is only getting 97. His Eagle Cohort best one got 132. His Praetorian's best one getting 253, not bad at all. And his Princope is getting 173 and 157, so they did very well as well. So well done to him. Then we have David uh, Lettenmeyer. Here's Seleucids. His general died very quickly uh, into early on into the battle, but he did do okay. He was there till near enough the end. Um, 137, 136, sorry, with his general. Um, his archer's 138. His uh, Thorax, geez. Did not do well. He like lo most of them didn't even get into twenties. Hundred uh, seventy nine though with that one in his pikes. I, I think he could have done better. Could have brought cheaper pikes and brought better other stuff like better infantry here instead of the hillman. Then we have Alex U seven seven eight who's playing as Carthage. Who at the end was the one that really clinched it for the attackers. Three hundred eight kills with his noble fighters. One hundred seventy eight with another samurai getting one hundred eighty six. One hundred fifty five with his Libyans. His pike's not doing so well. 100 kills with his Cretans. 100, actually 119, even better. And that's about it. That did really well. So anyway, guys, if you enjoyed that battle, please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment to show your support. And until next time, Legionnaires, 